bam, now you have a ton of Federal Reserve economic data from the Fred API in Python. Shout out to Jerome Powell and all the agents at the Fed for helping us get this bread. Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Get Bags, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get economic data from the Fred API in Python. And yeah, this video is gonna be more in depth than any of the other videos out there online. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! And we're gonna be checking out the series observations. I'm gonna show you how to use advanced parameters for those queries. We're gonna get category details, we're gonna get category children, we're gonna get series from categories, get release IDs get release series and get source IDs. And if that's putting you to sleep already, then you know, I just don't know what to tell you. So first thing, we're gonna pop open our trusty Google here. Go ahead and Google search Fred API. And then once we're here, we can kind of just click in there, open up a new tab. And then here's just our main page where we can search for time series. So here we are on the script. All my scripts are available on my GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. First thing, we're gonna import our modules. As you can see here, I've imported my API key. So if you need to get an API key, if you come over here to the docs, you can come over to my account, hit that drop down, go ahead, sign up, go ahead, click into the API keys here. Then once you're here, you can request an API key. As you can see, my API key is right here, but I gotta keep y'all from getting your grubby little hands on it. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm reading it in from another file, or you could just hear as a string. First thing we're gonna do is define our base URL here. Let's go to the docs and see where we can find that. So I'm back on the docs here. If you wanna read about it, go ahead, click into some of these links. We're gonna scroll down here to series slash observations. So we click in here, gonna take us to Fred series observations. And then here is our get request link. I'm gonna copy this out. This is gonna be our base URL, as you can see here. So the first endpoint we're gonna be hitting is this series slash observations endpoint, and we're gonna use this series ID as a parameter. Let's go ahead and pop back over to our main page of Fred, and we're gonna actually search up this manually. You're gonna see, hey, look, this is our very familiar Fred page, but we're gonna pull this data through a Git request. So here in this block, what we're gonna be doing is just assigning our parameters. So you can see I've assigned the series ID ID, and you can also see the series ID right here on the website. And then I've assigned start date and end dates for our time series. I've assigned a time series frequency in units, but we won't use these just yet. So I'm creating a dictionary here, which has our parameters. And as you can see, it's just a dictionary format. And then next here, we're gonna make a Git request to the API. So we have our base URL, we have our observation endpoints, and we have our parameters that we're passing through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run the code up until the response here, just so we can make sure everything looks good. So if you wanna get an idea for what the URL looks like, here it is. And you can also see that here. So when we're making a Git request, it automatically puts our parameters at the end, and that's what's going on right here. So you can just go ahead and make a sample Git request, passing our URL and then our parameters separately here. So our response looks good. So for the first example, I'll just walk you through this block here. So first we're gonna parse this JSON data out. You can see it's a dictionary. So if you wanna look into that dictionary, you can see it has a bunch of different keys that we can take a look at. So here we'll take a look at the observations key. So as you can see, it's a list time series data. So we're gonna pass that into a data frame here. It looks nice and neat. We're gonna format that date column into date time objects, no problem. Now we're gonna create an index here use our date as our index. So this looks very familiar. And then all we've done on this line here is we're just casting float as our data type for our values. So that's what's going on in this block, fairly straightforward. And then if that doesn't work out, then we just print out the status codes here. So to make sure that it works here, I've just plotted out this data. Here's our graph and you can see it looks very similar to our graph from the website. So next I'm gonna show you how to change the frequency on our time series. So on the website, if you come over here and you change your frequency on the website, you can see it changes the graph a little bit. So you can see these observations are quarterly observations. So if we come over to our script, I can uncomment our frequency in our parameters. And here is our time series frequency variable. Now I'll show you where to see that in our documentation. So if we are under our series observations endpoint and we go to our parameters here, frequency, we can scroll down and we'll see all of the different frequencies that are available to us. So Q for quarterly, and that's what we have here on our script. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that all the way through. We'll go ahead, we'll plot the data out. So here I have the data plotted and then I also have our time series data here. And as you can see, it's quarterly. 
So I'm back on the website here. I've changed our frequency back to monthly. I'm gonna go edit graph and we're gonna look at units here and we're gonna do percent change from a year ago. So when people are talking about inflation, this is a graph they like to show. As you can see here, it's percent change from a year ago. So to do that here, we're gonna have our variable time series units, PC1. So here in our parameters, I'm gonna comment out frequency. We're gonna use our standard frequency, which is monthly. And then I have our time series units here, which is PC1, so percent change from one year ago. So back on the docs, if we go under parameters here and we go to units, we scroll down and we can see our units of data value transformation. We're using percent change from a year ago, which is PC, here it is slippery bastard we're using our percent change from a year ago which is pc1 so as you can see here we've assigned that variable and we're passing it as our parameters so we're going to go ahead and run all that we'll go ahead we'll plot the data out and we'll take a look at our time series so here we can see our values have changed and also our graph is looking much different as you can see that graph looks very similar so that's how you use advanced parameters in our series observations endpoint so back on the docs here, we're gonna to go to our categories, endpoints here, we're gonna to go to slash categories, we're gonna get a category. So if you have a category ID, then you can get a category. So here, we're just assigning our endpoint here, we're gonna to add to our URL, then we're gonna assign a category ID, and then once we have an ID, we can use that to get the endpoint. So if you run this all the way through, you can see here we have our categories. It's a dictionary. So here's how you access the key. And then since it's a list, you need to go into the first item of the list. So as you can see, it's a dictionary here. So we're going to use the key name to go ahead and grab the name of that category. Now, this doesn't seem that helpful, but it all makes sense in the next endpoint, which is our category children. So back on the docs here, click into category children, and then you can read about it. Here we are, we're gonna assign our endpoint here. We're gonna add that to the back of the URL. We have our parent ID, which is the one from the previous request. So here in our parameters, we're gonna pass in the parent ID to get the category children. So we can go ahead, we can just run that all the way through. If we look at our response, it's a dictionary here, and then it has categories. And then as you can see, it's a list, but then it also has a bunch of different categories. So you can continue to navigate through the data structure in a method like this. So you can continue to navigate through the data structure by using the category IDs that you see here, and then you can find all the children. So to navigate that, you might think of a data structure like a tree. Up next, we're gonna be getting category series, so you can get series in a category. And then also pay attention here, you can also get the categories for a series. So it works both ways, but we're gonna go ahead, click into category series here, read about it. So from our previous request, I see prices here. We have an ID. I'm gonna go ahead and use this category ID and we can take a look, see what happens. So here, this first line, let's take a look. Here we have a dictionary and it has just a whole bunch of data. So you can take a look at the keys of that dictionary and we're gonna go into our keys series here and notice it has two S's. Um, so as you can see here, we turn that into a data frame and then we have our data frame here. It looks like a bunch of data. I've got the columns here. I figure, hey, it makes sense to sort it by popularity. So sorted it by popularity. So we have the most popular time series up top. Back on the docs, we got our releases, endpoint slash releases, get all releases of economic data, no problem. Let's go ahead and run through it here. We have our endpoint. We're just gonna add that to the back of our URL. Gonna pass our params through we're gonna format that response into a data frame, no problem. And then we're just gonna take a look at it here, just the ID and name column. But of course, you know it's a bunch of columns, so you can check out the columns there. It's not too many, but um, it'll give you some information. You can check out the link to the source of the release there, but we just have our uh, names there. So, so that's how you get the release IDs, no problem. Next, we're gonna get the release series. So we're gonna get the release series here. You can click in, read about it. So the important piece I don't want you to miss here, we've got our endpoint. We're just gonna add it to the back of the URL, but then we're passing in a release ID. So you can see here, here's our release, which is our CPI, it's ID 10. We're gonna pass that in as our parameter. We're just gonna hit the endpoint here. We're gonna format the response, get it into a data frame, and then we're just gonna print it out so we can take a look at it. So as you can see, 16 columns and 1,000 rows in our response. 
So what that signals to me is this endpoint is paginated. So if we want to work with pagination, you can go over to limit. You can see here maximum number. The default is a thousand. So that's the max. Now, if we want to paginate, so what we can do is just use an offset here. You'll need to make a little bit of code that's just going to chunk the response so that you can save everything. So also note that we checked out release slash series, but as you can see here, there's also series slash release. So they're related. All right, last but not least, we got our sources endpoints here. We're going to click in to get all sources of economic data. Read about it. So here we have our endpoint. We're just going to add that to the URL. We've got our parameters here. No problem. We're going to hit the endpoint. We're going to go ahead and format that data into a nice data frame. So you could see our response here. We have a bunch of IDs and then here are the sources of our economic data. Bam. Now you have a ton of Federal Reserve economic data from the Fred API in Python. Shout out to Jerome Powell and all the agents at the Fed for helping us get this bread. If you like the content, buy me a coffee. The link's right here. Watch out for those red candles. Let's go get these bags.